Did you know that 80% of business partnerships ultimately fail? Yeah, that's a pretty scary statistic. In other words, four out of five business partnerships don't make it. So when I get an email from a guy and he wants to know, should I go into business partnership with a few of my work buddies? I'll bet you can guess what I tell him. And that, my friends, is up next. Hi, welcome back to Over 50 TV. My name is Lou Reyes, I'm your host. If you're new to the channel and you wanna learn how to start, build, and grow a business when you're over 50, start now by subscribing to this channel and also click on the bell so you don't miss anything. I wanna get right into the email that I got here uh, that I received. It says here, Dear Lou, I'm a 52 years young white collar worker at General Motors. I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm not one of thousands of people losing their jobs during the latest round of cutbacks the automaker is making. He says here, uh, but the stress of watching these never ending cutbacks has worn me down and I'm ready to leave General Motors and start, start my own business. He goes on here to say, um, I want to start a lawn maintenance business with a couple of my GM colleagues who are also wanting a normal life. Well, let me just say this, okay? Um, you want a normal life. Well, being an entrepreneur, being self-employed, I don't know if there's anything such uh, as, a, as a normal life, being an entrepreneur, uh, being self-employed. I mean, it comes with its own set. Being self-employed comes with its own set of challenges. Uh, it does come with, with stress uh, at, at times, at many times. Um, there's, I could go on a list of things that are, are, are not a normal life when you're an entrepreneur, what people might consider a normal life. Um, but I can go on with a lot longer list of reasons why I think people should be self-employed. He goes on to say, we are leaning towards getting into the lawn care business because we all work for lawn care companies during the summer breaks from college. So we have some experience in that area. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this about lawn care. Um, it's definitely um, an area that uh, if you have experience and, and if you love it, if you really enjoy lawn care, and, and, and go for it. Go for it, that type of business. But I always believe and I know that you don't go into business unless it's something that you really like or something that you that you have a, a passion for. Uh, don't go into business just because you want to make money and you know, you're tired of GM. That's the wrong reason to go into, into the, uh, this particular kind of business, I, 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 any kind of business. Um, it says here, he goes on to say, uh, I know it is also a business that is fairly easy to get into. He's talking about lawn care. And yeah, I, I, I imagine it is a fairly easy business to get into. There's not a lot of, it's a low tech business. Uh, I got to believe the investment's pretty low. Um, you know, you're buying some lawn lawnmowers. I don't know what they cost. Maybe buying a pickup truck and some other equipment. But it, it's probably, uh, in terms of the capital investment, it's probably not too, too high, not too intense for that. So yeah, I, I think I would agree with you on that. Um, but I, I've never been in the lawn care business, so that would be my guess. Um, he says here, um, I know these guys professionally, meaning the people he's working with and the partners that uh, he's, he's looking at or considering bringing on. They are excellent workers, so I feel pretty comfortable partnering with them. Well, here's the red flag, okay, to me anyway. You, you're considering going into business with people that you work with, uh, you know them professionally. I don't know how well you know them. But I know whenever, anytime you go into a business partnership, it's, you can re think of it like you're getting into a marriage. You know, you, there's got to be a courtship phase. You know, there's a, you meet the person, you court them, you get to know them, you, you see if you have the same likes or similar likes and, and, and how well you get along. Then you get engaged, then you get married. You know, I see becoming business partners and there's just a, the, the similarities are, 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 are there, you know. You're going into a business partnership. I, there should be a courtship phase, a phase where you really get to know each other while you're in business together, not working at GM where you don't have to worry about um, anything really, you know, you, you get to your regular paycheck. Yeah, you do have the stress because you're seeing other people losing their jobs and you're worried you're going to be next. I, I get that. But, you know, you don't have the problems or the issues that are going to come up uh, when you're self-employed and when you have partners. There's, there's uh, issues like, you know, hey, are we getting paid? Uh, are we getting paid this week? Am I going to get a paycheck? 
You know, I'm self-employed. Am I going to get a paycheck? You know, I read a story uh, about Geico, uh, the insurance company, and the owner and his wife, or the guy that started the company, he and his wife, they went four years, barely, sometimes, most of the time, not getting a paycheck. Four years. They lost money the first four years. Their marriage must have been pretty darn strong for them to stay together. But think about it if you're in a partnership with a guy and you're building the business and maybe one guy wants to build it, one guy just wants to draw money out as fast as he can because he's got bills to pay and he's got a wife at home and he's got kids and, and, and obligations. You know, there are a lot of, of things that, you, that could go wrong or, or problems that could, that could come up when you're, when you're self-employed. Uh, and you're just starting out. So again, I get back to it, just go right back to it. There's got to be, to me, there's got to be the, the courtship phase. Then you get the engagement phase, as I mentioned. Then you get engaged and then you get married. So you're going into business with some guys that you work with. Uh, yeah, you get along with them and you say they're excellent workers, so you feel pretty comfortable with them. But you don't, I'm, take my word on it, you're not going to know them. You're really not going to know them until you work with them, until the times are tough, and then you really get to know them. There are other issues that could go, that could go wrong on a, on a partnership, especially a partnership you're just jumping into is it's what's, what it sounds like, and, and, and I believe that is what's happening here. There are other things that could go wrong. You know, what if one guy works harder than the others, and then there's some resentment? Or what if, if one guy wants to take off a, a number of days or has to take off a number of days and the other guy's got to do a extra work or more work? Um, what if the guy eventually you find out, one of, the, one of your partners you just don't get along with? You know, um, there are a myriad of things that could occur. And I go back to that stat, you know, 80% of business partnerships ultimately fail. And I don't care if somebody says, well, let's put together an agreement, an ironclad agreement, an agreement that writes out everything so that we know what's going on. Yes, have an agreement and have an agreement in writing. But so much can go wrong in a partnership. Uh, and to me, that is, especially on your first business where you don't have a lot of experience um, in being self-employed, uh, you don't have any experience being self-employed. So much could go wrong that you're not going to anticipate. And there's no way you could unless you were, you were self-employed. So, but, but he says here, my question is pretty straightforward. Do you think it would be better for me to go it alone or to have partners? And I think I've kind of already answered that. There's not, there's not a doubt in my mind I've answered that. But let me just answer it clearly. If you're going to go into business... And if it's your very, especially if it's your very first business, go it alone. And that, my friend, is my answer to your question. If you want to learn more about starting, building, and growing a business when you're over 50, start now by subscribing to this channel. And don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss anything. I want to thank you for watching this episode. If you have any questions, please send an email to us or make a comment in the section below. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.